from cyberspace to outer space. The number of UFO sightings in Canada is soaring tenfold over the past 25 years. The majority of those flying objects eventually get identified, but a few are never explained. And that's enough to keep some sky watchers wondering if just one sighting could be real. Here's Ross Lord. Blame it on Hollywood. But an increasing number of Canadians insist the drama surrounding unidentified flying objects is real. There is a very bright light, and I kept watching, and it just sort of came right up, right across, just floating like it was floating. Sort of like these images from Halifax. What the hell is that? This is the second time I've seen it. Fort Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, London, Sudbury. This Winnipeg science writer has never seen one, but Chris Rutkowski works with a network of observers on an annual UFO survey. It doesn't automatically say the aliens are invading and, and landing in uh, Mississauga. What it does say is that people are seeing some very unusual objects, uh, many of which we can't uh, ascribe to a simple explanation. And UFO sightings in Canada are soaring to new heights. When they started keeping track 25 years ago, there were barely more than 100 a year. Since then, a steady increase, spiking to almost 2,000 two years ago. Last year was the second highest number on record. Only about 14 or 15 percent of the cases in 2013 are unexplained. Just enough mystery to keep UFO believers wondering. Occasionally I've noticed things that were moving across the sky that were not planes or satellites, just a different color, um, a different shape. And even the experts admit there likely are advanced civilizations out there somewhere. Maybe there's ways around the laws of physics or ways of traveling that we haven't even conceived of yet. And why they would want to come to Earth, I don't know. May, might be the scenery or the weather. Hmm, maybe the Canadian winter isn't so bad if you're watching from a safe distance. Ross Lohr, Global News. Clyde Symington is now a businessman. He was the Republican governor of Arizona for six years, elected when the first George Bush was president. Now, a decade after leaving the State House, he takes me to a Phoenix park and discloses something unlike anything uttered by any other high-level U.S. politician. If you if you had been here ten years ago and standing out here and looking up there at the uh, at the lights and the view, um, you would have been astounded. You would have been amazed. Governor Symington is referring to what is now known as the Phoenix Lights, an object videotaped by many and seen by thousands over several nights in the Arizona sky in 1997. Major sighting here. It was described by witnesses as larger than a football field and silent. It was a giant V, all right? And the right side of the V went over us. The left side was like a couple blocks over it. We just didn't know what to do. You know, it was just like... My God, how big is this thing? The great state of Arizona, Fife Symington. The former governor, a Vietnam Air Force veteran, had never publicly acknowledged seeing it until now. And I suspect that uh, unless uh, uh, the Defense Department proves us otherwise, that it was probably uh, some form of an alien spacecraft. So why didn't he say anything then? Partly, he says, because he didn't want people to panic. And I think as a public figure, you have to be very careful about what you say because uh, people can have pretty uh, emotional reactions and, and, uh, and I said my goal wasn't to try to stir the pot. And he went to humorous and controversial lengths not to stir the pot. He held a news conference after the Phoenix Lights to announce the mystery had been solved. And now I'll ask Officer Stein and his colleagues to escort the accused into the room so that we may all look upon the guilty party. Don't get him too close to me, please. <laughs> In the alien costume, the governor's chief of staff. Now this just goes to show that you guys are entirely too serious. <laughs> UFO enthusiasts were not amused, especially since the governor was believed to have seen nothing. But now he's coming out. The lights were really brilliant, uh, and it was just fascinating. It, I mean, it was, it was enormous. It just felt otherworldly. You know, you're, in your gut, you could just tell it was otherworldly. Symington will be talking about this in an updated film about UFOs called Out of the Blue. He has also talked with an organization that wants UFO information more out in the open. It's very significant that someone of the stature of a governor would come out and say that they acknowledge that they experienced uh, a UFO. 
um, because it brings a lot of credibility and strength to the case. Governor Simonton says he did tell his family, friends and staff about what he saw early on. I still behind the scenes uh, tried to investigate it, but I got nowhere. So what were the Phoenix lights? Well, frankly, we don't know. What we do know is that it's as much of a mystery today as it was a decade ago. Gary Tuckman, CNN, Phoenix. Interesting lights here. Some of those are planes, and they're probably all planes. But you'll notice some of them are swooping down in a really cool fashion. As if, yeah. Not sure what those guys think they're doing. What the hell do these guys think they're doing? An air show this time of night? There's those guys again. Well, lights up in the sky aren't really that unusual around the new year. However, some Cleveland residents say they saw something more than your typical firework display. Eyewitness News reporter Katie McCall joins us live with the story, all new at 6. Katie? Gina, a Cleveland woman who says she has never before spotted a UFO swears that she saw one hovering in the trees right over US 59. Now, a UFO investigator is looking into whether this was a plane, a helicopter, or something from out of this world. Just there, like, you know, this. On December 30th, Lauren Harris was on Highway 59 in Cleveland when a brightly lit cylinder hovering in the sky caused her to pull over. Strange, like the lights were pulsating on it and it would disappear for a few seconds and it reappear in the same spot. And then we noticed too that it wasn't moving at all. So we're like, no, that can't be an airplane. And what would a helicopter be doing this late at night over the, over the woods? I think it was a UFO. The nursing student says she tried to document the encounter. I phone up like this and I tried taking a picture of it and then I put it back down and it was gone. But never expected to be taken area. seriously. To her surprise, Fletcher Gray from MUFON, the mutual UFO network, is investigating. I have verified over 345 cases. Gray looks into reports of extraterrestrial vehicles, alien encounters, and aircraft modeled after alien vehicles not acknowledged by the government. This was verified by two independent witnesses, this is a UFO because we don't know if it's blown extraterrestrial or if it's one of our own. Here's a lady that uh, probably had, had a transplant where she'd been abducted. These uh, ETs or extraterrestrials are moving from one star system to the next. Gray believes a Cleveland police officer saw the same thing Harris did, and he's trying to obtain dash cam video. He's also looking into this reported sighting in Houston. His message to UFO observers, don't be afraid to speak up. Always con contact MUFON and to, to, to make their reporting their sightings uh, as long as they're credible. The police chief in Cleveland tells me he is not aware of any such sighting or dash cam video within the department. Gray says that is very common in his line of work and it will not stop his investigation. We're live in Cleveland, Katie McCall, 13 Eyewitness News. So we would like to know what you think about this investigation. Log on to our Facebook page and join the conversation. And if you saw one of those unexplained lights, well, why don't you share your photos with eyewitness reports? Just email them to news at abc13.com. Well, a mother and daughter in Nanton are also keeping their eyes on the sky. They say something was flying over their house, and they have no idea what it was. A plane, a UFO, perhaps some paranormal activity. Our Nadia Stewart gets to the bottom of it. Usually the lights shining bright above Sam Martini's Nanton home are the sun, moon, and stars. But on Sunday, she saw something a little different. It rose so slowly, and then when it came out as it came so quickly. It was around 11 o'clock at night. Sam and her daughter Bailey were at home watching TV. When outside, they noticed a pair of bright lights. They ran out to get a better look. Then the light just started coming straight at us and went straight and went straight over our house and headed to the northwest behind us. 
These blurry pictures, the only evidence of what they saw, whatever it was, it frightened the cattle. It was unlike anything Sam had seen before. Well, the way those white lights were hanging in the sky as long as they were and they didn't change color and they didn't change size for so long, that just makes me wonder. And sightings like these are more common than you may think. According to the Canadian UFO survey, there were 1,180 sightings last year, more than 100 in Alberta alone. And experts say there have been reported sightings of paranormal activity in Nanton before. Between the pictures and witnesses, experts say on the surface it's an unusual case and probably an explainable one too. They aren't quite convinced that this is paranormal activity. The shaking of the object or the movement of the object, um, that looks like um, a camera on a, with a time exposure on it that may have been bumped. It, it, it looked very sporadic. So a UFO? Probably not, say the experts. But he and others are fans of anything that gets Albertans gazing up into the night sky. Nadia Stewart, CBC News, Calgary.